Good morning to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Monday, the 17th day of September 2018. I am back in the Raleigh area. Uh, no power back at home. Not much internet access. Plus, I went and set up another camera system up in the Spring Lake, Manchester area along the Little River. You might see that from time to time on the Weather Channel today. And it is also in our iPhone app and available for our subscribers to our Hurricane Track Insider site. Uh, not to worry, though, I will be posting snapshots from it on Twitter, available for all. So I ended up in Raleigh because I couldn't get back to Wilmington, uh, which is fine. I'm not complaining. It's part of the gig. Sometimes you get stuck. Sometimes hurricanes hit where you live. And you just have to roll with it, try to have a good attitude. So I'm, uh, I've been working on things, trying to check out what's happening with Florence, what can I tell you about that you don't already know, uh, but more importantly, what can I tell you that can be helpful, not only with the Florence situation, but down the road. Remember, we are only basically at the halfway point of the peak part of the hurricane season, and we still have a lot of time to go on the clock uh, and so we need to make sure we stay vigilant. All right, so the latest on Florence, it is a tropical depression, and it is finally moving off to the north-northeast now. It'll eventually get, it will get back out over the Atlantic Ocean, and part of the energy will head off into this direction, and then some of it looks like it's going to break off very weak and kind of sink south, but it is nothing to worry about. There was a little bit of an indication a couple of days ago, more suggestion from the European model ECMWF uh, specifically that maybe it tries to regenerate, but it doesn't look as likely now. Nevertheless, we will watch and see. Uh, we don't turn a blind eye to these things. Ivan did that in 2004. It regenerated, if you recall. Uh, this is what is left over from Isaac, and it is now bringing heavy rainfall uh, to portions of the Caribbean Sea, Jamaica, South Cuba, and uh, Haiti, maybe moving over the Cayman Islands. This is Joyce, which is also a depression near the Azores. And if we look at the five-day outlook, luckily, nothing else brewing, uh, especially in the main development region out here. I don't know that we're going to get much else out this area, uh, in this area, for the remainder of the season. It's not impossible. But our focus is going to be on this region over the next several weeks, which climatologically, that is where the attention gets focused this time of year anyway. So looking at the satellite picture for this morning, uh, this is the wide shot, and you can see a few features here. There's Joyce, again, no concern. This is the leftover low-pressure area associated with Isaac. And again, that will bring some heavier rain squalls uh, to portions of what we call the Greater Antilles and south of there into Jamaica and spreading over towards the Cayman Islands, but it's more widely scattered rather than being concentrated. Nevertheless, something to keep an eye on. A pretty good moisture slug coming in here towards the southern Windward Islands, uh, just part of the intertropical convergence zone, but there could be some heavy rainfall for Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago and the southern Windwards. Just keep an eye on that. No tropical system uh, and an organized nature expected to form from that. Then up here, this is the remnant circulation, of course, of Florence. You can easily pick that out. Still creating deep convection, uh, some of that off the coast of South Carolina and Georgia, and unfortunately some of that over parts of eastern to central North Carolina. And the moisture plume heading now up into the mid-Atlantic states, deep inland, uh, you know, areas that are not used to seeing tropical cyclones come through and it is still a tropical depression which of course is the first phase of a hurricane's development uh, and it's holding on to a very vigorous circulation a lot of tropical moisture high dew points high water contents in the atmosphere high amount of water and that's getting wrung out as you well know over uh, the eastern part of the country here from the Carolinas now north through Virginia, West Virginia into Pennsylvania, and that will spread on from there. We'll take a look at that in more detail in just a moment. I want to quickly look at the Eastern Pacific, and we see if there's anything brewing there over the next five days. 
And yes, there is a system, uh, pretty high chance of development headed towards the Baja. We will keep an eye on this over the uh, next few days. And if you look into the, the graphic there in that little box, the text part, uh, although environment, are, oh, it's hard to talk, although environmental conditions appear conducive for tropical cyclone formation, the large size of the system suggests that any development should be slow to occur. It's likely to become a tropical depression, and we can see that here on the satellite imagery. And the thing to note, okay, so it might not become a hurricane. You know, you remember Norbert and Odile four years ago uh, for this area. Odile really giving a, uh, a knockout punch to Cabo San Lucas. This would be more of a significant rainmaker. And as we are learning once again with Florence, we really need to consider rain as part of the overall package more and more and more. We cannot ignore that and say, well, if it's not going to be a hurricane, or for that matter, an intense hurricane, then who cares? People in Texas and North Carolina, you know, Texas last year from uh, Harvey, it, you know, come on, really, the rainfall must be part of the overall package. And hopefully over the coming years, that can be factored into some kind of a new way to present the hazards from tropical cyclones to a new generation of people living along the coast. Wind, you know what? We're doing a better job of protecting against the wind, especially in the developed world. Uh, rainfall, I don't care how well your house is built. Unless it is sealed, let's turn that off, Unless it is sealed vacuum tight, it is going to be susceptible to water. And anyway, we'll get on that high horse again later. Bottom line, probably just a depression or a storm in the classification sense of the term, right? But for the Baja and parts of Mexico here, we could be looking at a pretty heavy rain event. Uh, this is just part of the overall monsoon that happens there diurnally, day into night, night into day, etc., all right, moving on along, let's show you the impacts here of Florence. And you can see that pretty prevalently. Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, all the way south into the Carolinas. This originated as a wave of low pressure in the atmosphere, a disturbance in the atmosphere over Africa. Made its way all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. Speculation early on that it would turn out to sea, including by me. I mean, the official forecast looked like it would turn out to sea and not harm anyone. And now look at it. Unreal. I mean, that's why I'm so fascinated with these things, because they have such an amazing legacy. They are complex. They are mysterious. Yet, they cause so much anxiety, so much hurt. And, you know, I'm not happy about that, obviously, but that's part of the whole intrigue and interest in tropical cyclones, particularly, obviously, hurricanes in our part of the world. Elsewhere, typhoons, cyclones in Bangladesh, you name it. They have, these storms, been a part of history all the way back going millions of years, probably. As long as humans have evolved and been on this earth near coastal areas and even inland areas, as we're seeing, imagine what the Native Americans thought you know, when the Susquehanna Valley flooded, you know, when the Noose River Basin flooded, when the Pamlico and Albemarle Sounds, as we know them now, flooded, when Lake Okeechobee, uh, when, you know, Lake Charles in Louisiana, whatever, you get the idea. Unreal, uh, the amounts of energy and what happens with these systems two weeks or more after they leave the coast of Africa. So just kind of Pointing out the obvious, you know, they are amazing to track, but yet they bring so much in the way of problems. That and, and here we are. So this will continue for the next day or so, and then we can finally rid ourselves of the weather system known as Florence. But until then, yes, heavy rain. And this really shows you, you know, still that convection I showed you offshore of the Carolinas, South Carolina in particular. And then the heavy rain bands still wrapping around this system uh, through central North Carolina, Durham, towards Green, uh, Greensboro, not quite there, but along the I-40, I-85 corridors. 
and hopefully, finally, we can start drying things out here in southeast North Carolina, northeast South Carolina. I just noticed where they said 501, Highway 501 from Florence to Conway, now open in both directions. So you got to hang in there if you're watching this and you're in the affected area and you're just depressed and it's just terrible or you've got family members that you've been talking to and you're watching this video and they can't, maybe you're texting them, tell them to think of a happier time, honestly, something before Florence that makes them feel good and tell them that will come again. You know, if they've got their life, the property, yeah, of course it is very stressful, but we can get through this the sun is coming out, things will dry up, and we're going to have stories to tell each other for generations. And that is the positive that comes out of this. Reminding future generations, your children, okay, as they grow up and they went through this, and if you have children in the future, you know, and you're just starting a family or getting ready to, imagine what you're going to be able to tell them about what happened, how epic it was, the widespread devastation, but in a way that they can be better prepared themselves to deal with it in the future. We have to learn from these systems. And that's true because it's not over yet. All right? I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but it is my job to inform you as far out in advance as to what could be coming. And this guy, with the tools that he has got at his disposal, really did a great job. Him and others out there. It's not just Ben, but... We saw this coming in August. If you've been watching these videos all summer, we talked about it. And the upward motion where the atmosphere is not sinking and drying, but rising and full of moisture, that's coming back again as we end September and get into October. That's what this graphic here is showing us. This outlined uh, by the meteorologist there, Ben Knoll. So where does this happen? First of all, this is your time right here. So this is September 17th, and then down here is October the 10th. It's interesting because October 10th is the secondary peak of the season. Uh, I'll show you that sometime. You've got that one peak. I'll kind of draw it over here. So this is like June, et cetera. We get into August, and then September 10th is the peak, and we come down, and there's another peak uh, in October, and then a third peak in November. That's kind of what it looks like. You remember that graphic? I've shown it a lot of times. This peak right here is October 10th, climatologically speaking, over 100, not hundreds of years, but back to like the 1850s when reliable records were kept. And this looks like it'll coincide with that time frame. Right around here, all of this rising motion coming into play around the end of September over the Atlantic Basin. That's what this is showing us. And that would go through that secondary secondary peak in October. So we have to be ready. That would favor the Gulf of Mexico, the Northwest Caribbean, and maybe the Southwest Atlantic. Hurricane season not over. We have a long way to go. So I've got several people that have emailed me and messaged me uh, on social media about how they can support what I do. Some of these are brand new followers. Some have been following for a decade or more and never really realized that this was what I do for a living. You know, they thought maybe I worked somewhere else for a paycheck and then did hurricanes as a hobby, and it's, it's not true. This is literally what I went to college for. Uh, I have a degree in geography, and I have put that to use in studying and researching and educating about the impacts of hurricanes, tropical cyclones, on our society. And I do so using the public awareness part, the before and then during the part where they hit the deering as you're well aware i set up uh, amazing unmanned camera technology weather instrumentation uh, barometers and uh, anemometers to measure wind and then in the off season i tour as much as i can doing talks and i don't charge money to do so okay when i go speak at a university or at a conference they usually help to pay my way but I don't charge a fee, okay? So I need the support of the public, like public radio. Okay, I work with the Weather Channel. They license some of the footage and, and live access, uh, but that's not a salaried job, right? So we kind of all pitch in, kind of like public radio, like I said, 
and it's called Patreon. And you can become a patron for the long haul. You know, it's nice to get a, uh, very nice, of course, to help pay the bills, to get a donation. Uh, a donation sounds like I'm a nonprofit. Uh, maybe we do that one day, but a contribution towards my effort is the way I like to put it. But for each month that goes by, I have to be able to support the family and build up equipment, okay? One of the cameras that I used fell into the ocean. Uh, it's no surprise. I put it, and wait till you see, we have a little bit of a, uh, our fingers crossed, a surprise coming, which I'm not going to talk about until I know that it worked. But we lost a piece of equipment. I won't say it was on purpose, but we knew that it could happen. Uh, and I need to replace that. We're talking several hundred dollars. So if you wouldn't uh, mind, you know, this number was three or four just a year or so ago. Maybe a little bit more than that. But now it's at 124 patrons, folks that are sustaining this for the future. And I would like to get that number up into the three or 400 range. And if we can get to $2,500 per month, then I can literally be self-sustaining where I don't have to worry about supporting my family and I can invest in the business, grow it, add to the equipment list, etc. And every time there's a big winter storm in the off season, a flood in the spring season somewhere, hurricanes in the hurricane season, I can be on top of it, educating the public, setting up equipment and studying it, bringing it to you. And we can do more and more where I make more available to the public. It would be great to do that. So I wanted to mention this because I've had people saying, uh, almost twisting my arm, you've got to talk about how to support yourself, Mark. I guess I'm just too, nobody likes talking about money, but if we don't have money, we can't pay our bills. So here I am, uh, not quite begging for it, but I'm looking at what I have done with relatively uh, little, small amount of a budget. And then you think about, well, sure. What if we had hundreds of patrons every month collectively adding, oh my goodness, it could be incredible. So there you go. Thank you for listening to my commercial, for those of you that are still here. <laughs> hey, if I don't talk about it, it won't happen, right? Nobody's going to look out for me but me. And then the patrons here, you've got my back. I really appreciate it. Ah, Boy, it's good to at least chuckle a little bit. It has been a week. I have literally been on this mission for one week starting today. I left for the Outer Banks Monday a week ago. No complaints. I will never complain uh, because this is what I signed up for. Okay, 22 years ago, I knew this is what I wanted to do, and here I am doing it. Uh, I would say just as good as, if not better, than anybody else out there in terms of what I do. Okay, have a great rest of your Monday. I really appreciate you tuning in, especially for listening to some of the rants and raves and commentary and so forth. Uh, and I appreciate you being on the other side, watching and listening and learning from me. I am Mark Sutt of HurricaneTrack.com up in Raleigh, North Carolina. I literally have no idea when I'll be back in Wilmington. So stay tuned for that. I'll have more for you at the very least sometime tomorrow.